Yes, it's George Burns and Gracie Allen. <laughs> It's morning as we look in at the Burns home, and George is just coming downstairs. A happy, carefree husband coming down to have breakfast with his wife. As he reaches the foot of the stairs, music bursts from his lips. Ain't misbehaving all by myself. Music bursts from his lips. Ain't misbehaving. I'm happy on the show <laughs> Well, that's as close as we can get. <laughs> He calls gaily to his wife. Oh, Gracie, your big kissable daddy is up. Here's volcano lips. <laughs> Isn't that disgusting? But pity him, ladies and gentlemen, for a terrible fate awaits him. Little does he know that meeting in the den is that bane of his existence, Gracie's club, the Beverly Hills Uplift Society. So innocently, he searches for his wife. He looks in the kitchen. Googie? No response. He looks in the dining room. Hey, go gay. <laughs> no response. Now he walks to the den door. No, George, don't open it. <laughs> no. <laughs> they can't be in there. I sprayed that den only yesterday. <laughs> he stands for a moment frozen with horror. Then fright gives way to anger. He calls upon his manhood. Again, no response. <laughs> then the door opens and Gracie comes out. <laughs> oh, no. It was you who looked in the door. Yes. Oh, Blanche Morton certainly needs glasses. She was facing the door and she said, Gracie, when did you get an Airedale? <laughs> Wish I were an Airedale. I'd run that bunch of old cats up the nearest tree. Oh, cats. Why, George, in that room sits the cream of America's womanhood. True, a couple of them have gone to butter. <laughs> Gracie, I told you repeatedly, I will not allow those women on my premises. Now, who's the owner of this house? You are. And who's the boss around here? You are. Then who's leaving right now? You are. <laughs> Me? Well, George, you can't break up a meeting of government agents. Government agents? Those fugitive from a dark belfry? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Well, it's true. You see, President Truman has asked all the merchants to cut their prices. That's to fight inflation. So? So, we girls have volunteered to go around to certain shops and buy things to see if they've cut their prices. Where, where the OSS HD. I know I'm a fool. <laughs> What's that? Office of Secret Shoppers. Hack division. <laughs> Real patriotic, you girls. Look, Gracie, you don't have to buy things to see if prices are cut. Just go in the store and ask. But this way we have concrete evidence. We get a hat and a sales slip. Oh, naturally, we don't keep them. We send them right to Washington. Oh, you send the hats to Washington? No, the sales slip. We'll wear the hats. You wear the hats. <laughs> they look silly in congressmen. <laughs> But suppose they want to see the hats. Suppose they want to see that concrete evidence. Well, if they want to see something concrete, let them look at our heads. <laughs> You've got a point there. So are the other girls. By the way, who's going to pay for all this? Well, the government, of course. We sent a telegram to Washington asking Congress to appropriate $100 million for us. $100 million? Yes. Why, you would only need 70 or $80. Well, oh, I know that, dear. But I also know our government. If they can't give it away, a hundred million at a chunk, they won't fool with it. <laughs> you uplifters have, have had some wild ideas, but this tops up... Oh, there's someone at the door. If it's a man in a white coat, he'll find ripe pickings in this house. Come in. Telegram for the Beverly Hills Uplift Society. Is that you, Pop? <laughs> no, it's not me. I'll take it, boy. George, give the boy a tip. Yes, son. Oh, gee. I'm going to bet this on a horse. You are? 
Yeah, with a hundred to one long shot, I can run this into a dollar. <laughs> so long, kid. Oh, oh, George. Oh, this is terrible news. Congress won't give us a penny. This can get them all reelected. Oh, dear, I can't bear to go in the den and read this to the uplifters. It'll kill them. Let me read it to them. <laughs> no. As president of the club, it's my duty. Then let me watch. Very well. Come on. Girls, quiet. Quiet, please. Uh, girls. Uh, fellow uplifters, we have just received our answer from Congress. Oh, 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 oh. Did they send the money? Will we get new hats? Oh, we girls can't wait. Yeah, tell us, Gracie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Meredith Wilson, are you still a member of this silly club? Yes, George, and I do not regard this club as silly. I'm proud that they chose to make me an honorary woman. <laughs> but you're a man. Sort of. <laughs> you can't intimidate him, George. He's one of our most loyal members. Thank you, Gracie. And I will continue to remain a loyal woman, even though my social life has suffered to some extent. <laughs> How has your social life suffered? Well, so far, the only man who's been willing to dance with me is Arthur Murray. <laughs> I'll be glad to do the mazurka with you, Meredith. Oh, George, stop interrupting. We must get on with this meeting. Uh, girls, I'm sorry to announce that Congress has refused to vote us an appropriation. Oh, oh that's that's awful. Awful. Oh, I God. think that's unfair. Me, too. The Navy got a big appropriation to build ships. Yes. They spend millions on those old battle wagons, but not a penny on us. <laughs> Some battle wagons cost more than others. George, please. Girls, girls, I think you'll agree with me that Congress has acted unwisely in this matter. They certainly have. Of course, we can't expect Congress to be too intelligent. We must remember it's made up of men. <laughs> and, and wherever you find men, you'll find petty jealousy, bickerings, and general confusion. Thank goodness we're ladies. Yes, we're that. Well, I'm not giving up. I intend to fight inflation. This is no time to discuss your diet. <laughs> Are you insinuating that I'm plump? Well, they don't call you Blanche the Blimp for nothing. <laughs> ladies. Well, I wouldn't want to have your skinny figure. You're built like an hors d'oeuvre. Two toothpicks stuck in a pickle. <laughs> to give Clara curves. Oh, well, you ought to know, dearie. You wore one when you were young. <laughs> Whose side are you on, Meredith? Well, I refuse to participate. Well, thank goodness one of us is a lady. <laughs> Gracie, the government refused to give you dames any money to buy new hats, so you might as well break up your club meeting. Oh, no. The Beverly Hills Upper Society doesn't give up so easily. How about it, girls? Are we quitters or are we fighters? Fighters. Are we weak or are we strong? Strong. Are we mice or are we men? Mice. <laughs> They're mice? Well, I didn't give them much of a choice that time. <laughs> what you mean? We'll show those congressmen they can't shove us women around. Yes, they're forgetting about woman's suffrage. That's right. We're all married, and married women go through plenty of suffrage. <laughs> Gracie, I mean... All those in favor of sending a stern letter of protest to the government of the United States say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. No. George, you can only vote if you join our club. I take back the vote. <laughs> now... <laughs> Who can do shorthand and typing? One of you girls must have been a secretary at one time. Not me. Not me. Me either. I was. <laughs> you, Meredith? Yes, I was secretary to a Mrs. Perkins, a businesswoman back in Mason City. However, her husband forced her to discharge me because I was too attractive. <laughs> well, Meredith, here's a pencil. Take this letter. Ready, Chief. Um, you were... Uh, United States government, United States dear government. How about my jawling government? Yeah. Dear government? Yes. Yeah. Now read that back, Meredith. Oh, uh, United States government. United States 
dear government. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's telling them. Pour it on them, Gracie. Bear down, kid. Make them know it. You bet I will. Now, here we go, Meredith. Uh, dear government, yours is the 22nd inch receive and contents near that. Uh, contents sneered at. Period. Got it, Chief. She got it. Uh, how dare you refuse us an appropriation? Question mark. Why, you politicians give away so much money that Congress ought to change its name to Truth or Consequences. <laughs> oh, brother. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. <laughs> Fool with us, will they? Next paragraph, Meredith. Ready, Chief. He's ready, Chief. Um, uh, look at the way you spend the taxpayers' money, period. Why do you need a Secretary of War and a Secretary of Navy, question mark? Let the soldiers and sailors do their own typing. <laughs> Gracie, you can't say that. Why not, question mark? Because they'll think you're a jerk. Exclamation point. <laughs> Is that so, question mark? Yes, comma, that's so, period. Now cut out the punctuation. <laughs> well, just tell me this. What did Congress ever do to save us money? They're trying to cut down on taxes. Oh, there you are. They want to cut down on taxes when streetcars are overloaded now. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you heard me say. All in favor oh, say yeah. aye. 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 All opposed say no. <laughs> we'll show them. Next paragraph, Meredith. Ready, Chief. He's ready, Chief. You can go here. Um, you politicians who run this country are certainly confused. You have the nerve to say that our form of government is democratic. But what do you see in Washington? Republicans. <laughs> Gracie, you can send a letter like this to the government. I can, too. Those men need a good straightening out. They've got things all mixed up. You're right, Chief. Well, look at that big mix-up over the name of Boulder... If you'll pardon the expression, damn. <laughs> there you are. Look at the way they mixed that up. What did they mix up, Meredith? Well, they changed the name Boulder Dam to Hoover Dam. Oh, well, how do you like that? Naming a dam after a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> they changed the name from Boulder Dam to Hoover Dam to honor Herbert Hoover. They wanted the dam to have his name. Oh, so they did it the hard way and changed the name of a great big dam. Why couldn't they have done it the simple way? Like what? Changing his name to Herbert Boulder. <laughs> well, that would never enter my mind. I couldn't... All oh, favor say aye. Oh. Aye. All opposed say no. No. But, Gracie, oh, why did you vote no on your own idea? That's the American way. <laughs> now, let's get on with the letter. <coughs> Last paragraph, Meredith. Ready, Chief. He's ready, Chief. You're um, ready. And in conclusion, government, we wish to state that unless you men change your tune, we women will secede from the Union. We'll start our own country, and men won't be allowed in it. <laughs> A country with no men. What do you do about children? We'll hire babysitting. <laughs> and I haven't had breakfast. All this on an empty stomach. Well, I'm going to the office. Goodbye, Gracie. Goodbye, dear. Well, aren't you going to say anything to the girls? I'd uh, better not. Their husbands are bigger than I am. <laughs> oh, wait, George. You can mail our letter to the government. Oh, yeah. Let me have that thing. I'll take care of it. Now, don't leave it in your pocket. You know what to do with it. That I do. <laughs> Gracie, I just had a terrible thought. What, Clara? Even if the government sends us that money to buy hats, it'll be too late now. Why? All the best hats will be snapped up. Why? Oh, 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 wait, girls. I know another way to get the money. And we mustn't be too proud to take it. Remember, fishermen get money from the lowly shrimp. Farmers get money from the common cabbage. Trappers get money from the ordinary skunk, and we'll get money from our husbands. Hooray! Now, all right, fellow uplifters, the chair will entertain suggestions for getting hat money from our husbands. It won't be easy, Gracie. I've tried everything on Harry, and he just sits there on his big fat wallet. 
<laughs> you know, the same way. So is Arthur. Well, there must be some way to make them loosen up. Why should wives work without getting paid? If you have a maid, your husband pays her, but she doesn't even have to kiss them. Well, not if she's fast on her feet. <laughs> oh, come on now. Let's think hard. May I come in, Gracie? Uh, no one answered the front door. Well, look, girls, it's still good way. <laughs> if that's the way married women are going to greet a single man, maybe Bill shouldn't be allowed to come in. Now, let's stop for a moment and think of our husband. Well, that's long enough. Come in, Bill. <laughs> Thanks, Gracie. Hello, girls. Bill, you look better every day. Well, thank you, Mrs. Bagley. And you? Yes? You look better at night. <laughs> oh, flatterer. <laughs> uh, girls, Bill has given me a wonderful idea. Not only will we charge our husbands for making them coffee, but for other things, too, like cleaning house, cooking their meals, and washing out their lace things. Lace things? Does your husband wear lace things? Yes, all corsets have laces. Uh. Oh, now, we've got to make up a price list. Bill, you're a man. You set the price list. Okay. Uh, pretend that you're married to one of these girls. Let me see now. Who'll be Bill's wife? Eeny, meeny, my. I will. Couldn't have been Mo. <laughs> all right now, Bill. You're coming home from work, and at this point, you don't owe your wife anything. We're, we're even. Yes. Okay, Clara. Well, first I take your coat and hang it up. Uh, I owe you a dime, Clara. Uh, then I bring you your pipe and slippers. I owe you 35 cents. And then I sew buttons on your shirt and mend your socks. I owe you a dollar. <laughs> and then I kiss you. We're even again. <laughs> so long, ladies. Oh, girls, don't mind, Bill. This idea's a gold mine. Disperse to your homes and get busy. But, Gracie, what will we charge? Oh, whatever the traffic will bear. Now get going. Well, I'm, I'm back there. Is my lunch ready? Oh, yes, it's on the stove. All I have to do is bring it in. Good. I didn't get any breakfast, and I'm really starved. What did you fix me? Well, first you get a bowl of clam chowder. Oh, clam chowder. I love clam chowder. Yeah, that'll be 15 cents, payable in advance. Uh huh. From now on, everything is cash and carry. Gracie, I, I'm not going to let you get away with charging me for food. I'm going to be very firm and very determined. You're also going to be very hungry. <laughs> no money, no food, huh? Not a vitamin. Okay, you win. How much is the clam chowder? Fifteen cents. I can get a bowl in Charlie's Cafe for a dime. All right, you can have this for a dime. That's better. I'll do what Charlie does. Take out the clam. <laughs> Go ahead, take it out. That'll be five cents extra for labor. <laughs> labor? Removing the clam. Leave it in. Here's the 15 cents. Thanks. Pete's sake, you got a cash register? Mm -hmm. I'm keeping this on a business basis. And now, after the clam charter, you get a blue plate. That'll be 75 cents. Here you are. What's on the blue plate? Oh, if you want food on it, that'll be another dollar. <laughs> now, see here. No dollar, no food. If I wasn't starved, I'd walk out of here. Here's the buck. By the way, dear, you telephoned from the office and said you'd be here for lunch. Sure. I always do. That'll be another 50 cents. For what? Making a reservation. <laughs> okay, I'm hooked. Now bring me my lunch. I haven't eaten all day. Mm, yes, dear. Sit right down at the table. You do want to sit down, don't you? Of course. That'll be a quarter. <laughs> a quarter? Parking fee. <laughs> Take it, take it. Now bring me some food. I'm hungry. Mm, oh, before I bring the food, um, have you heard the joke about the three holes in the ground? No. Well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'll cost you a dollar. 
Dollar? Why? Marshall. <laughs> Look, Gracie. Of course, if you'd rather not eat. Oh, what's the use? Here. Now, bring the food. Yes, dear. May I take my apron off? Sure, take it off. Fifty cents, please. <laughs> huh? Well, that's what you pay when they take it off of the burlesque. <laughs> Then leave it on. That's 50 cents, too. For what? Cover charge. <laughs> Here, now let me eat. Well, did you have enough to eat, George? Yes. Ah, oh, you're mad at me, aren't you? Yes, I am. Charging me for food. That's no way to get a new hat. Well, it works pretty well. But we're married. We love each other. You don't have to go through all that. Here, give me that money back, and I'll and 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 I'll show you the right way to do it. All right. Here you are. No. Just ask me for it, like any normal wife would ask her husband. All right. George, dear. Yes, sweetheart. May I please have the money for a new hat? No. No. <laughs> no. Well, I, I think I like the other way better. I like my way. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. <laughs> With our special guest tonight, Meredith Wilson, B. Benadera, Hans Conried, Gail Gordon, Harry Lubin and the Maxwell House Orchestra, Bill Goodwin, and yours truly, Toby Ray. For America's Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. As we join the Burnses tonight, we find them discussing the gala New Year's Eve party they're planning for tomorrow. Gracie, we're going to have the greatest New Year's Eve party in town. Mm, you bet we are. Money is no object. I've hired an orchestra. You did? Yeah, and on New Year's Eve, musicians really come high. And they leave even higher. <laughs> uh, what about the food? Did you take care of that? Mm-hmm, I bought two turkeys. Oh, and I hired a maid to pass around the hors d'oeuvre. This is really going to be some party. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I bought champagne. You did? Uh-huh. And at midnight, we'll fill our glasses and drink bottoms up. Isn't that an awkward position? <laughs> yes, it'll spoil my hat. You know, darling, with an orchestra tomorrow night, you'll be able to sing your very best. Ah, oh, no. People don't want to hear me sing. Oh, they do, too. And sometime before the party, be sure to learn that new popular song, Drop Dead. <laughs> popular song called Drop Dead? Sure. Well, there must be. At every sociable, when you get up to sing, you say, oh, what would you like me to do when everybody else... Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> That's my big hit. Oh, Drop Dead, oh, Drop Dead, oh, Drop Dead. <laughs> you are the ideal of my dreams. Yes. Is that all right? Oh, yes, I got uh, by the way, uh, how many guests are coming? Oh, I must have sent out 20 or 30 invitations. Mm. I invited a lot of old friends we haven't seen for a while. Meredith Wilson, Good. Professor Korkendorfer. Wonderful. Gracie, you've really worked hard to make this party a success. I'm going to give you a kiss. Well, thank you. And tomorrow night, New Year's Eve, you'll get another one. Gee, two kisses in one year. <laughs> Got the one on your birthday. Oh. That was a big one, too. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I hope everyone shows up for the party. I haven't had any replies to the invitations I sent out. Well, did you say RSVP? Of course not. I said, come to the party. <laughs> Side D, you don't have to spell things for me. RSVP. If you want to say Russ Voop, just say it. Actually, <laughs> RSVP is not Russ yeah. Voop. Oh, she, uh, come in. Howdy, little lady. Howdy, little man. Why, Mr. Judson, what a wonderful surprise. George, look who's here. Say hello to our dear friend from Texas. How do you come do? Come in, sit down, Mr. Judson. Well, thank you. First, I'll wipe off my boots. I don't want to get this dust on your rug. Oh, what a gentleman. You're wiping your boots with a clean handkerchief just to save my rug. No, ma'am, to save the dust. 
It's from Texas. <laughs> After I shave, I, I use it for talcum. Uh, well, George, why don't you speak to Mr. Judson? How do you well, do? Well, tell Mr. us all about yourself, Mr. Judson. Why haven't you been to see him? Well, my family's been in mourning, ma'am. Oh? Yeah, terrible tragedy. My sister. Young, pretty, never sick a day in her life. You mean... Yeah, she got married and moved to Oklahoma. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. George, <laughs> do you realize you haven't spoken to Mr. Judson? How it's do you not do that he isn't glad to see you, Mr. Judson. He's just shy. By the way, what brings you to California after all these months? Well, now, I brought some fine Texas steers up here for the stock show. Oh, that reminds me, I've got to get back to my hotel and feed them. You keep the steers in your hotel room? Oh, why, sure, sure. Oh, don't you get complaints? Yeah. Yeah, them steers boil their heads off, but it's the best hotel you got. <laughs> well, I, I'll be moseying. You're now. not budging until my husband has the decency to speak to you. George, we're waiting. How do you do? <laughs> Is that any way to speak? Now, do it right. How oh, you'll have to excuse him, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> he's, he's got his mind on the big New Year's Eve party we're giving tomorrow night. Invite Mr. Judson to the party, George. George? Yeah, he's gone. Uh, yes, ma'am. He, he stepped into the next room. Well, here, I'll give you one of the printed invitations I sent out. I had one left over, so I put it in this drawer just in case, you know. Uh, oh, oh, my goodness. Well, what's the matter, little lady? You sound distressed. Oh, I am. Here are all the invitations to our New Year's Eve party. I forgot to mail them. <laughs> oh, George will be furious. Yeah, yeah, he'll bellow like a short-tailed steer in fly time. <laughs> I'd better hurry out and, and see all the guests personally and beg them to come to our party. You'll come, won't you? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but i got to get back to the ranch and help my wife. Uh, the hogs has been slaughtered, and by now she's probably smoking sausages. Oh, I hope she doesn't inhale. <laughs> You hope she doesn't in here. <laughs> oh, I like your sense of humor, man. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> but, Bill, you've just got to come to our New Year's Eve party tomorrow night. The Mortons and Bagley's can't make it, and Professor Korkendorfer has other plans, too. Well, so have I, Gracie. I promised to go to a party at Helen Burkett's house. Uh, we're going to do a little smooching. Well, uh, couldn't you come to our party for a while? Well, no, I'll be tied up all evening. Tied up? You won't have much fun if you can't use your hands. <laughs> no, Gracie, I mean, it's a date I can't break. You know, it's a, it's a real thrill to spend New Year's Eve with Hollywood's most... Glamorous blonde. Yeah, well, I guess it is. You sure, I can't rob the poor girl of that thrill. Oh, gee, I wish you'd change your mind. <laughs> Bill, we're going to have two turkeys and George will sing. That's three turkeys. <laughs> but I still have to turn you down, Gracie. Your invitation comes too late. Well, I better hurry along and try to get the other people. If this party doesn't come off tomorrow night, George may get so mad he'll walk out on me. He'll leave me to starve. Well, don't worry. After he's starved a while, he'll come back. Oh, but Mrs. Vandal, if we've paid for the food and musicians, and George's heart will be broken if no one comes to the party. I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Burns, but Chester and I plan to spend New Year's Eve with the Butterworths of Pasadena. We're friends of long standing. If you come to our party, you can sit down. <laughs> no, we shall sit down. We shall sit before the fireplace and toast each other. Oh, come to our house. We're using marshmallows. <laughs> we'll drink the toast in champagne. I love champagne. It makes me want to get up and dance, and the bubbles tickle my nose. <laughs> when you dance, you better not hold your bubble that high. <laughs> Well, I, I guess 
when you've had a few too many, you don't know what you're doing. We will not get loaded, intoxicated. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Vanderlip, please say you'll come to our party. If you don't, I'll have to go home and face a horrible disaster. Well, wish him a happy new year for me. <laughs> Well, Meredith Wilson is my last chance. I hope he's home. Hello. Meredith, how are you? <laughs> Meredith, you were supposed to get a beautiful invitation to our New Year's Eve party, but I forgot to mail it. Well, that probably accounts for my failure to receive it. Yes, yeah, yeah. So I'm inviting you right now. You've just got to come. It means so much to George. Oh, I'm afraid I have previous plans for tomorrow night, Gracie. I'm proposing to a lovely young creature. Just the type I've always wanted to marry. A girl. <laughs> Meredith, must you propose to this girl? George will be so disappointed. Well, why? I've never given him any encouragement. <laughs> if you don't come. Can't you propose at our party? Oh, no, I fear that's too public. Besides, I've promised to kneel before the very sofa on which her father proposed to her mother. Oh, did she accept him? <laughs> I presume so. Uh, uh, do her folks approve of you, Meredith? Oh, yes. Her entire family has taken me to their, if you'll pardon the expression, bosom. <laughs> How nice. It's unfortunate that your party isn't tonight, Gracie, as my betrothed is working and I'm quite free. Yes, if tonight were only New Year's Eve, all the people I invited could come, and that Meredith, I've got it. What? I'll make tonight New Year's Eve. Well, have a care, Gracie. You are assuming powers greater than those of Patrillo. <laughs> I mean, I'll make George think it's New Year's Eve. But that's 24 hours away. That's the idea. He's going to bed early tonight, so I I'll get all the guests over and wake George up and tell him he slept 24 hours. That's a brilliant idea. Gracie, no one else has a brain like you. Except possibly me. Mm -hmm. We do make a great team. We're like those congressmen who support each other in Washington. When we put our heads together, it's a solid block. <laughs> Uh, shh. Quiet, everybody. Are enough people here to get the party started? Oh, sure, Gracie. Well, uh, does everybody know everybody else? Meredith, you haven't met the Vandalips. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Wilson? How do you do? It's always a pleasure to widen my acquaintances. Thank you. By that, I mean I enjoy meeting new people. I'm sure that you and your wife are wide enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that. Oh, I knew you'd get along. Now, uh, uh, put on your paper hats, everyone, and I'll go in and wake George and tell him it's New Year's Eve. Well, how long has he been in bed? Oh, about 15 minutes. Well, maybe he's still awake. Oh, no, no, I don't think so. He was lying on his tummy, and that way he usually rocks himself to sleep. <laughs> now, I'll wake him up, and the party can start. Okay. Happy New Year! Uh, what's the, what, what was that? It's New Year's Eve, dear. It's... <laughs> New Year's Eve? This is, this is Thursday. No, nah, no, nah, dear. It's Friday. You slept for 24 hours. Are you going out of your mind? Get out of bed. The guests are here for the party. Guests? Well, sure, listen. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Get dressed, dear. <laughs> you must be dreaming. Hand me my robe. Here. I don't believe this. Happy New Year! Happy, Happy New Year! Year. Yeah. I feel like I only slept a few minutes. You slept 24 hours, you sleepyhead, you naughty boy. 24 hours? Why didn't you wake me? Well, I didn't have the heart, darling. You were so tired. Funny thing is, I still am. <laughs> now, the, the, the guests are waiting. Come on, I'll help you out of your nightshirt. Close your eyes. <laughs> Close my eyes? My nose is shiny. <laughs> I feel so tired. Oh, here's George. Now the party can start. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year! 
go to your heart, George. Uh. <laughs> Having a good time? Yeah, fine, fine. 24 hours and I'm still tired. <laughs> yes, George slept for 24 hours. He's a regular Rip Van Wrinkle. <laughs> that's, uh, that's Winkle. I like it her way. <laughs> now, uh, before we start the entertainment, Tallulah will pass the hors d'oeuvre. Tallulah, stop trying to date Bill Goodwin. Why, Mrs. Burns, such a thought never crossed my mind. As sure as my name is Tallulah Schwartz. <laughs> Hollywood 5264. <laughs> All right. Pass the hors d'oeuvre. Oh, if you mean the weenies, they ain't burled yet. Well, please go and burl them. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, while we're waiting for the hors d'oeuvre, Meredith Wilson will play a flute solo. Oh, good. That's good. Well, thank you. Uh, gentlemen of the orchestra, may I please have an introduction to the Andante Cantabile from Sigourney <laughs> I forgot to bring my flute. <laughs> well, we won't let that spoil our fun. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Oh, isn't this gay, George? George, wake up. <gasps> yes, yeah, you're not enjoying yourself. Here, blow your little horn, dear. Uh. <laughs> now we're rolling. I'm so tired, I can't understand it. Professor huh? I guess I'm too early. There's nobody here yet. Let's show him, gang. Happy New Year! Somebody spoke? Yes, Professor. Everyone's here. Now hang up your coat and join the party. Oh, yeah. I hang it up here on this nice long hook. Take your coat off my nose. <laughs> Can't you see? Of course I can see. I got ice like a hog. <laughs> So long, Professor. Where have you been? Oh, I, I was experimenting with a little monkey, and I couldn't bear myself away. Oh, interesting work, huh? No, no, no. Strong monkey. <laughs> George! <laughs> George, look who's here. George. George, wake up. <gasps> oh, you're not having fun, dear. Blow your little heart. <laughs> Hello, Professor Cockendorfer. Okay. 24 hours since I slept and I'm bushed. Well, look who's here, Professor. The monkey followed me. <laughs> this, is, this is my husband. Such a nice girl to marry a monkey. <laughs> oh, fine. Well, now that all the guests have arrived, Tallulah, pass the hors d'oeuvre. Okay. I got your weenies here. They're red hot. Weenies, anybody? Schultz and Newman's weenies. They're skinless. She means the weenies. Schultz and Newman both have skin. <laughs> have a weenie, Bill. Oh, thanks, Tallulah. What's the good word? Hollywood 5264. <laughs> All right. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Are you having fun, George? <laughs> from the most talented member of the Burns family. <clears throat> oh, that, that's a swell idea. Sing for us, Gracie. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, 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 I don't mean me. Besides, I, I'm not a good singer. Huh? Oh, you're swell, Gracie. Oh, I'm not. Huh? <laughs> well, really, Gracie, you're an excellent vocalist. Oh, I'm terrible. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Look, would you like to hear from me? Yeah, blow your little horn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. And now, now we come to the grand finale of our party. Everyone will be real quiet, and, and we'll hear from my husband, Sugar Throat Bernie. <laughs> Darling, he's sound asleep. Sh shall I wake him up so he can sing? No, no. Oh. Well, then I guess the party is over. 
Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. <laughs> Where am I? Gracie! Gee, everybody's gone. I can't get over it. 24 hours sleep and I couldn't stay awake at my own party. Well, I better get my Rose Bowl tickets out of this drawer. Got to start early in the morning. Holy smoke, what's this? All the invitations to a New Year's Eve party. Gracie didn't mail them. What goes on here? Hello, operator. Hello, operator. Operator, tell me, is this New Year's Eve? No, I'm not plastic. <laughs> it isn't? That's tomorrow night? Thanks. So the whole thing is one of her tricks, huh? Well, here's where I get even. Good. She's sound asleep. Happy Fourth of July! <laughs> It's the 4th of July. You've been asleep six months. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, how wonderful. Now I can go out and buy all the summer clothes. <laughs> For me, nothing else. Ladies and gentlemen, George and I want to wish you all a very, very happy new year. Blow your little horn, dear. I can't, dear. I swallowed it. <laughs> Gracie, I've got a surprise for you. Next Thursday, our guest star will be Gregory Peck. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I'll feel kind of silly standing alongside of a big, handsome guy like Peck next Thursday. Oh, don't worry, George. You'll have something he won't have. What? All the straight lines. 